that the situation around Kadyrov is getting extremely suspicious and there are legitimate concerns that he is missing. At the same time, untamed Chechens turned against Russians in Bakhmut and to make things even worse for the Russian army, Ukrainians struck deep in Crimea and destroyed the Black Sea Navy headquarters of the Russian forces. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> Even I like it, to be honest. But okay, this episode of ridiculous Russian propaganda is personally related to me, so pay attention. I have a babushka who is at this point 87 years old and recently she got an invitation to join the contract services of the Russian army. It basically promises you free education, help with the utilities, help with even a mortgage and all this once again fairy tales because Russian government assumes that not too many people actually come back from Ukraine. And in terms of salaries they are offering on average approximately $2200 per month. Yes. This is the amount of money they give for you to sacrifice your life for Putin. Yes, maybe in the first world countries this salary pretty much is insignificant or very small or even below living minimum wage. But in Russia it is considered to be pretty good salary, but still not enough to go to war. And to be honest, there is not a single salary in the world which will justify you going to invade another country. But some people, obviously, as everywhere else in the world, they do care about money more than anything else. And so yes, once again my babushka is 87 years old, receiving an invitation to join the Russian forces. So, so at this point I think it is pretty safe to say that I have a battle babushka. And statistically, if a country has to invite anyone they can to join the army, I think it pretty much signals very big problems with the recruitment, don't you think? But what do I know? But speaking about statistics, 48.5% of you guys are still not subscribed to my channel. Guys, some very cool things are coming and there will be at least three major announcements about the near future of the Russian Dude channel you are not going to regret. I'm so excited to share this news with you, I just can't yet. And if you don't want to miss these announcements, because at least one of them will be extremely time sensitive, just please consider hitting this subscribe button. And if you are the true member of the Russian Dude Army, you can also feel free to follow me on Instagram. The link is down below. Right, and now let's briefly talk about some extremely good news from the US. And then we'll give you a very unbelievable update from the south of Ukraine. And then we'll finalize everything with surprising events from the east. And speaking about the US, today President Vladimir Zelensky met with the President Joe Biden in the White House. And as a result of this, an additional 325 million dollars military support package to Ukraine, which will include anti-aircraft missiles, high Mars ammunition, light tactical vehicles and so much more, was agreed by the Biden administration. And later on, even though just yesterday America was not planning to send long-range missiles attack MC to Ukraine, today Biden actually said that okay, we might send a small batch to you, President Zelensky, so let's just see it in the near future. Which, to be honest, is going to be huge. Because just take a look at this map, which shows the range of attack MC, which basically allows Ukraine to take under 100% fire control all the occupied territories of their own country, including Crimea. After this, President Zelensky went on an unexpected visit to Canada and met with the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And Canada itself pledges another $500 million support package to Ukraine and 50 armored vehicles. And while we do have such good news from the Western Ukrainian partners, what is at the same time happening inside Russia? Specifically in Moscow in one of its clinics, where allegedly an uncle of Ramzan Kadyrov is recovering from surgery. 
well, apparently, just recently, several convoys of extremely expensive cars with Chechen license plates were spotted arriving to this specific clinic, which is blocked for anyone else except somebody who is inside. And the very first question is, it is kinda way too much attention if it is only Ramzan Kadyrov's uncle. There was even a reportedly a helicopter which arrived to this place and landed in one of the helipads. People obviously immediately started asking questions, and in the best way how the Russian propaganda does it, in order for public to be calm and not think that actually it was Ramzan Kadyrov inside this hospital, and maybe something happened to him, they released this video with Ramzan spontaneously meeting with emergency services. Now, obviously, the very first assumption people made is that this video was pre-recorded long time ago, but the second potential assumption is that maybe this was the AI deepfake or anything like this, because first of all, we almost never see Ramzan Kadyrov's face up close, it is either from his back, from his side, or from very far away. And even if this is a real video of Ramzan Kadyrov meeting with emergency services right now as we speak, he still <laughs> does not look even close to be a healthy person. This whole situation gets more and more suspicious every single day, and it pretty much allows us to assume that potentially Ramzan Kadyrov is either very, very ill, or he might be even missing. This whole event with Kadyrov will be extremely important later in the video, so just please pay attention and keep watching. But for now, let me give you some outstanding news from the south of Ukraine, then I'll give you an update from the east, and then another potential mutiny that might come very soon. And so, first of all, let's make a quick stop in Sivastopol, where recently there has been yet another attack against this bay. And one of the first things Russians did is to once again put a smoke screen. And later on, information started going public that actually a target of this attack was the Russian headquarters of the Black Sea Navy. In fact, we started receiving even more videos later that draw at least two attacks, maybe even more. And after so many photos and videos searched online from pretty much every different angle that confirming that yes, indeed, this was the military headquarters of Russians, <laughs> then the head of Crimea, Sergei Aksyonov, said that every single Ukrainian missile has been intercepted, there are no distractions, not a single building was targeted, please only trust verified sources of information. <laughs> well, with this statement, he definitely confirmed to me that he is not very reliable, don't you think? And then the Russians themselves started claiming that unfortunately six soldiers were eliminated and as a result of this attack, with the official confirmation from the Ministry of Defense of Russia reducing even this number to only one person. And according to the locals, there were at least 25 ambulances rushing to this place, which is 24 more then you need for just one allegedly injured or even eliminated person. So just let me know in the comments, do you believe the Ministry of Defense of Russia? Alternatively, Ukrainians said that this attack was performed right in the middle of the meeting of the Russian Black Sea Navy officers and even some generals, and as a result of this, dozens of them were eliminated. And potentially, even the commander of the Russian Black Sea fleet, Admiral Viktor Sokolov. And this is yet another attack by Ukrainians against the military infrastructure of Russians in Crimea, and reportedly since the beginning of this war, only until June of this year, Ukrainians were able to destroy at least 17 Russian military vessels, totaling up to 888 million dollars. This is not taking into consideration the attack against this military headquarters and the most recent destruction of the landing ship Minsk and the submarine Rostov-on-Don. But wait, there is more, 
because according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians were able to finally breach the final line of defense of Russians in the Parvozhye front line. And if you remember from my yesterday's episode, Ukrainians were able to breach the defense fortifications, anti-tank trenches and dragon teeth of Russians in the direction of Verbovy, and reportedly, recently, they even put their armored vehicles through these defenses. Which, to be honest, is one of the very first observable time when Ukrainians were able to bring their heavy machinery so far behind the active front line. But the absolutely perfect good news are not yet fully confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine. I mean, yes, Ukrainians might have breached this line of defense and brought their tanks and armored personnel carriers, but there are no yet major liberations. There are even some talks online that Ukrainians were actually ambushed in the direction of Verbovy, so they had to move back. But the facts remain. The facts is that the breach is now fully complete. And even the most recent British intelligence report confirms that there are strikes deep behind Russian front lines, such as, for example, including all the way up to Crimea, Sevastopol, behind Russian fortifications, the third line of defense in Robotny close to Tokmak, which pretty much shows the complete confidence of Ukrainians in their counter-offensive. They are, right now, destroying the military objects and infrastructure of Russians, preparing for their actual advancement by foot. And as a result of all these combat activities recently, as you can see, this is how the combat map changed. Ukrainians were able to get a little bit closer to Nova Prokopivka, and then in the direction of Verbovy, both Russians and Ukrainians brought uh, their contact lines a little bit closer. But so yes, now let's talk about some very surprising events that are happening in the East, where free Chechens turned against Russians, and then we'll talk about potential new mutiny happening in the near future. But first of all, allow me to make an extremely quick stop in Tula, because recently there was allegedly another drone attack, which left a city in the total blackout. Approximately 5000 residents had no light for several hours. Next we once again go back to Ukraine and refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that there are combat activities along Kupiansk Svatove Krimina front line pretty much every single day. And recently Ukrainians were able to destroy a big artillery firing position of Russians located to the north of Kovalevka. In addition to that, Ukrainians were also able to destroy a mortar firing position of Russians located to the west of Kriminna. And as a result of these most recent combat activities, this is how the Svatove front line changed, as you can see on your screen right now. Pretty much Russians and Ukrainians got a little bit closer to each other. And at the same time, approximately in the same area, Russians tried to attack Lipar 2 tank of Ukrainians using their own lands and drones. The tank was, by the way, stationary and not even moving anywhere. And somehow Russians still missed. And the same cannot be said about the Ukrainian forces, because as you can see from this video from Donetsk region, Ukrainians were able to successfully destroy a Russian self-propelled artillery system called Pion. But most important event recently happened in Bakhmut, where Chechens of Sheikh Mansur battalion were fighting against Russians and they ambushed them. Which, to be honest, is extremely interesting, because according to this video, Chechens are approaching from the east, exactly from the positions where supposedly Russians are. So it's either they went behind their backs, or they just kinda were expected to be met as friends, and they just pretty much turned against Russians. And I do have to say it here, because you do know how much YouTube hates my channel, that is why unfortunately I have to censor all this footage. But if you want to see fully uncensored episodes of The Russian Dude, please feel free to check my Patreon. It only starts as little as $4 per month, there's still one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not, and this is the best way to support my work. The link is down below and thank you so much. And as we get back to Bakhmut area, specifically to Klishivka, as you can see from this map, Ukrainians continued their liberation to the east of this major city. 
And at this very moment, according to Zelensky himself, he personally believes that Ukrainians will be able to liberate Bakhmut and two other very important cities. These two cities he does not declare which ones are them yet, for obvious reasons. And here is one more thing. Remember, in the beginning I ask you to keep in mind this extremely suspicious situation around Kadyrov. And well, according to the Secretary of National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Oleksiy Danilov, according to his own intelligence, there is going to be a new rebellion or mutiny inside Russia, most likely related to Kadyrov quote-unquote events. According to his data, Ukraine already knows who will be in the head of this another mutiny, but it will not look like Wagner march against Moscow several months ago. Most likely, this time the mutiny will be pretty quiet until the very last moment, and then it will erupt spontaneously and extremely unexpected, leaving all the Russian government officials close to Putin, and Putin himself to be completely bamboozled. At this very moment, Ukrainians obviously do not reveal when this mutiny is going to start, either because they simply do not know it themselves, or they do not want to share this extremely sensitive data. But they do say that it will happen. It will happen sooner rather than later. And just my own personal assumption, because Oleksiy Danilov gave us a little hint about that this mutiny will be most likely related to Kadyrov events, Maybe this mutiny will be led by Chechens, because right now the only way Putin can keep these people pretty much intact, it is because thanks to Kadyrov. He is paying, Putin is paying Kadyrov so much money to restore Chechnya and to pretty much become his friend, because as soon as there is no more Kadyrov between Putin and Chechens, this is when these free folk will be able to regain their freedom. And just once again, this is my personal assumption, so do take it with a grain of salt. And also, if you want, let us know in the comments what do you think, who will be the ones starting the next mutiny in Russia. And as soon as it happens, I will obviously be here to report on these events, so if you don't want to miss them, just once again, please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support, and see you on Tuesday.